Merry Christmas, everyone! Hey guys, Shurm here, and today I'm going to be testing the McLaren Senna in multiplayer in its season in Asphalt 9 at 6 stars fully maxed. We have the same sort of season that we had with the Corvette ZR1, and that one was so fun, everybody loved it so much, because it is unlimited fuel, you can just play over and over and over and over again. But because it's not a rush season, the rating is done normally, and the people with the most skill really do end up getting to the top, which is really nice and makes it so, no, it's not not just the people with the most time on their hands that make it up there. Now, in the past two seasons, I made it to top one, at least for a bit of time in the season, and so I was going to try to do the same with this one. You will see in this video how that goes. I recorded all of the races I played this season, which was over a hundred so far, and I condensed them down into eight of the best races, or most memorable ones, or ones that gave me good milestones and things like that, to give the most entertaining video for you guys. In this first race here, we were facing three very skilled people, two of which were from Legions United, who are Fury Predator and Brenton, and one other person, Tio, who is in Noobs United. But coming up to the end of the race, our main competition was against Brenton, who I was catching up to very close throughout here. I took the slightly shorter route, but he landed right next to me, and we crossed the finish line almost simultaneously. Thankfully, neither of us got knocked down, and the three Legions United members came up top. That's always nice to see. In this race, I am facing three pro team members, two of which are Dr. Hulusion and Alucard. And since everyone in the season is in the same car, it is pretty much completely skill-based. Obviously, you still have those annoying people who try to knock down other ones. I have been the victim of that uh, quite a few many times. But for the most part, it seemed like most people in this season respected each other and didn't try to knock each other down, and I am very thankful for that, because we got some pretty good races, and some of the best, closest, and most intense ones I had out of all the season are going to be in this video. So about this car, the McLaren Senna has the highest handling stat in the game, the only one above 100 it is actually above 101 even. So statistically, it is the most agile car in the game, and I would say that pretty much that's the case. Its top speed is not great, but its acceleration is pretty good, and its nitro efficiency is also very good. Now, other recently released cars, such as the Batista and Zenvo, are better than this one overall, also, those cars were easier to get than this one. I mean, I was one of three people in my club who even managed to get this car, and then I did it with only one blueprint more than was enough to unlock it. So it was not easy to get, even harder to star up. And so that is why you don't really see many of them in multiplayer at all. And back when there was the season with uh, this car, the Batista and the Zenvo, you rarely saw people using this one, simply because, number one, most people didn't have it, and number two, it really was worse than the other ones, especially at lower stars, because it was easier to star up the other two, at least by a bit. I have the other two at two stars. And because of all that, it is nice that we got this season to be able to see, well, for pretty much everybody, how this car is at max, because not many people probably know. I had the opportunity to test it at max earlier. You guys may have seen my video about that that on my channel, but not many people did. I really hope that Gameloft continues to do these seasons with the single car and unlimited fuel because they are so much fun. They allow us to get so much rep for our clubs as well. They're very skill-based and pretty much for the top players, they are some of the most fun that we have in Asphalt 9. So if anybody at Gameloft is watching this, please keep making these. Especially with perhaps some top cars of the game that not many people actually either got or managed to star up very much. So we barely beat Alucard in that race, and in this one, we are facing Tio again, as well as Pro Team Speed Rush. His car was purple also, so I knew that he was going to do pretty well. So, how am I doing in the Godly Beast special event? I have now three-starred the Atal design and the Corvette. I am now playing through Stalwart Monkey 3, the main missions, and I have done about one-third to one-half of the pinned missions in the event. I have still not needed to buy any more relay packs other than those two at the beginning for 1500 tokens. I have, however, spent some tokens on refills to empty the hazard thingy or whatever it's called so that I can play more races at once, because it's kind of annoying only being able to play three hazard races at once when they take three of the hazard thingies each, 
and then your car has five or four fuel. So yeah, I've been doing that quite a bit actually, but it's not nearly as bad as the Jesco event. I still really think that overall about this event. It is quite grindy, but I think, and a lot of other players most, I really think as well, believe that that is a lot better than a token dump event, especially when you can dump 15,000 tokens on a Jesco and not get it. This race brought me to number 2 on the leaderboard with only RPM Jester ahead of me by about 30 rating. Let's see if I'll be able to catch up to and pass him. So this next race here was a duel that took place a little bit later when I was trying to climb my way up to 1500. And it was not easy. I played, I don't know how many races kept going up and down from like 1430 to 1470. And yeah, it, it was a bit crazy. This season was even more of a roller coaster for me than the previous ones. And you know, I said that those ones were roller coasters as well. So in this race here, we have an extremely close battle against Fireball Neo, and he was pretty much on my tail for the entire race. So there is one thing that I want to ask you guys about. So recently on a couple of the tracks, ever since the Corvette season, people have been going some rather unconventional ways. And I think these are new ways that people have found that are actually faster if you have cars with good handling. See, a lot of people go to the right here now, in the Senna and in the Corvette and I've always just gone to the left before because it's always been seen to be faster but some people have actually gotten ahead of me a bit further by going that way and I think in most cases it's actually pretty close but if you have a really agile car and perhaps it is better to go that way. Also, there's one on one of these San Francisco tracks, Tunnel Jam perhaps, where instead of going to the left and up the barrel roll, you go straight through a bunch of cars that are sitting there. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about those routes, if they are actually faster, because I've seen a lot of people start going them, and I've not really known much about why. So we are now in a race against Brenton, Almighty Akbar, and Cookett. Now, before this race, we were at 1485. Five rating and I was thinking perhaps if I can get first in this four player race I can go up maybe enough to get to Master League now this is at a point where I had been going up and down up and down for gosh I don't even know how long it was it's probably a couple hours at this point and I really wanted to at least make it to Master League because then I knew I could go down I'd still be in Master League and I could build my way back up if I so want unfortunately this was I think maybe even the next day after some of the earlier races in the video and a lot of people had actually managed to get to Master League already and so I was no longer in the top two. Yeah, after that earlier race with Tio and Speed Rush where I got to 14.52 rating, that was actually the closest I got to top one in this season. Still, I'm very pleased to have reached number two, and I will continue to try to do my best in these seasons if they continue to be good. I do go up 15 there and reach 1500, putting me into Master League and setting me at number 10 on the leaderboard. I noticed that several other people right above me were at like 1501, 1502, and 1503. Probably what happened is they were struggling as well to reach Master League, and once they reached there, they were like, I'm done, and they just quit because, well, they reached it, and that's really what they wanted to do. And they were still in the top 10 and because it's so hard to get there well not a whole lot of other people are going to be getting there and still as i am saying this there's maybe a couple dozen people that are still above 1500. When this video comes out in about 12 hours after I'm recording this, who knows? So in this race, we're facing Pro Team Hater and RPM Dark JPN. My main competition here was Hater, who was just slightly ahead of me for most of the race. And this is kind of what happened in most of the races where nobody got knocked down or they weren't physics or they weren't wrecked or something like that is because a lot of the people up top have very close to the same skill level and are driving the exact same car, they tend to stay fairly close to each other and oftentimes wins are not by much as you have seen throughout this video. So in this race, he comes in first with me right behind him. The reason this race is of consequence is because it is actually the highest that I got to in the season, which is 1512, and I think I was at around five or six on the leaderboard at that time. But after that, it kind 
kind of went downhill, and I wasn't able to make it quite to 1512 again. However, I did get this very good race with Barbaros here, and I was at 1500 when starting this, so I knew if I could win this one, I'd be at least fairly close to 1512 where I was at before. And I think I made it through that section pretty well, but with him right on my tail. This guy was a very, very good driver. He was very close to the top of the season all the time, and I think he may have reached number one sometimes. So now it's time for my general review about this car. It isn't one of the best cars in the game, however, it is in S-Class. It's very fun to drive. It is very good in multiplayer if people actually manage to star it up because it's not especially great at one star. Its best stat is definitely its handling. However, its nitro is very good. Its acceleration is also quite decent. However, its top speed, as you've probably been able to see throughout this video, is somewhat lacking. And here we take the victory. Thank you all for watching. Please like the video if you have enjoyed and consider subscribing for more Asphalt Forza Minecraft and Need for Speed Heat content. I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.